Alan Furner, you got to go. Uh, James Ryan, <coughs> 21 not out, 21 victories. Um, he has the potential to grow into the best player in the world at this point because that's the best start to a career we've ever seen. It's unbelievable. It's just phenomenal. And um, <coughs> I'm so envious of it, like any sports person would be, to see, um, like, he's a very humble fella and, and down to earth. And I think he's, you just sense that he's not going to get too excited and get yeah. kind of blasé and, and kind of get ahead of himself here with this and think, well, this is easy, it's always going to be like this. You sense that he's a fellow who uh, just prepares well, keeps his feet in the ground, and he's very lucky to come into an environment like that. Um, I joined Shannon in 1996, and we won four All-Ireland Leagues on the trot, which was massive back then. And I thought, Jesus, this is just so easy, it's great. Um, it's a totally different scenario, but same kind of mentality. Do you let yourself kind of run away with yourself? But it's it's phenomenal. I think he's to achieve what he's achieved in such a and, and Jordan Larmer, he debut for Leinster this year, debut for Ireland. He's now Champions Cup winner. He's a Grand Slam, Triple Crown. Um, it's phenomenal. Um, some of these guys, what they've achieved, but in particular James Ryan, I think his consistency of performance is just it's out of this world. The way he's he just tackles, carries. Um, and has that little bit of footwork and intelligence mm. as well. Intelligence <coughs> is a really important part of it, isn't it? Because yeah. he sees defenders in front of him and he can shift his body, move into that little bit of space to get the head through and the ball is recycled quicker. And then he's work right in the tackle. He's bouncing up off the ground, so it's it's incredible. And he was uh, the one closest to Tally at the at the end <coughs> of the drop goal as well. Like yeah. So 81 minutes on the clock and he is the one getting there to make sure that it's his giant frame between the ball and the goals. There's a couple of fantastic photos of that from different angles. Four or five, on the, here we are, yeah, I see it on the screen, it's pretty incredible stuff. It's like Maradona against uh, Belgium. Yeah, yeah, a bit like that. You'd have nailed that, would you? Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> probably off my left. But I think, uh, I actually has dropped, okay, if you take the situation, which you probably can't do, as, as, as drop goals go, that wasn't a difficult one. That was 30 metres out in front of the post for a guy who's capped and, okay, pressure's obviously changed. Pressure changes everything, but you would have thought Lambie or Carter in that position would have nailed it. Yeah. So um, again, a little bit of fortune in there, but you make your own luck. I think it was a point that uh, was it Rory O'Connor was making on on Saturday about they've got their recruitment right. That they've yeah. they added Fardy and they added Low, um, whereas in previous seasons they were adding like Zane Kirshen who didn't really work out or. Um, Hayden Triggs, or yeah. even there was um, the Australian second row a couple of years back who just didn't work out at all. Like the difference a Fardy makes, and the difference a James Lowe, okay, so James Lowe obviously less relevant because of the, yeah. the screw ups um, with the rules, but uh, like the difference a Fardy makes is that you suddenly have this Jenga piece that can fit anywhere. So if James Ryan emerges, you can push him <coughs> to the back row, and if one of your back rows gets mm. injured, like ultimately Reese Ruddock, unfortunately missed out largely on, on uh, this season, then you do have that piece. So everything has improved. Well, I think the recruitment of, of overseas players is, is huge. It's hugely important to the development of the younger guys. If, if they come in with a view to replacing and, and taking the space of a young guy who could develop and, and by, by their presence are halting the progress of a young guy, that, that is not how it ought to be. And I think Leinster have probably looked at that in the last four or five years, reflected on it and went, if we're gonna bring somebody in, they've gotta have the right personality as well for the job. Fardy, by all accounts, is, is nearly looked on as a, as a father figure to the likes of James Ryan. He's, he's helped, I would imagine he's helped hone the, the both the skill set of James Ryan and, and the, the intangibles, like the dog. You know, yeah, how how do you turn up for these events week in week out? He he's he's brought him alongside him. He's probably he's taught him about transitioning from second row to back row, work right around the field. And um, the, the one thing you see in the likes of, of Ryan, which I think he may well have absorbed just by being around the likes of Fardy, is is anticipation. Fardy seems to be very close to breaking balls. He seems to do yeah. the right thing more often than not. And when you're in that environment, you just get to witness it all the time. You, you, you probably see, uh, you know, at ground level in a split second, Fardy probably had two choices, but why did he make choice A over B. And you Ryan is, is, is close enough to just witness that and feel it and see it and it gives him an incredible insight into what it is to be a top player and, and I think 
Leinster's recruitment of guys like Fardy now, and they, they've they've closed it up a little bit. They don't have as many guys as they used to, and obviously that's the the, the rules and regulations too. But they really are picking the right type of guy to come in and influence the younger group. 